Hey guys, how are we doing today? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration. This is Damien. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about the law of attraction and quote unquote gnosis or trance. And I don't have an absolute opinion on this. Another thing I want to say is you could consider this video a part three to the kind of two part book review I did where we were talking about the book Manifestation Made Easy by Jen Mazur, why it's a book or the only book I think New Agers should really waste their time with after a while, and why I think other magician from any practice could really benefit from working with that book. And once again, it just deals with getting clear on your own desires, step by step, and instead of trying to figure it out all in one shot. And whether or not you agree with the law of attraction, I think the reason a lot of us struggle is, at least in my experience, learning all this magical tech and this and that may or may not help you ever get clear on what you want. An example I came to, and I love the Gallery of Magic, I'll include this shoot in the drop-down box in the upper right-hand side of the screen, is yes, you can get magic to work, figuring out the magic that you need to be doing, what you want to be doing is something else and i think that's the joy of that book and one of the things that one of the joys of new age that honestly got lost in all the hippie dogma which i'm not about and i don't consider myself a new ager but that idea focus on not positive in this intellectual concept but what is purposeful for, what brings purpose or meaning to you I've been working on these shoots all day, by the way, so if I start to get loopy, it just is what it fucking is, but, you know, th that was the joy of that book, and I'm not gonna say that is the only book that does that, that's the one that I came to, and the one that even Dark Divine Feminine Spirits had me revisit. Yes, you're taking that on a grain of faith, if you agree or disagree, and if you don't believe, that's totally your call, I don't really care anymore. But anyway, what I want to talk about today is whether or not, once again, the law of attraction helps the magician achieve the so the so-called trance state for manifestation. And I don't have an absolute answer. Some will say yes, some will say no. I think that really comes down to getting clear on how trance shows up in your life. For me, writing helps me invoke a trance state because I think people like the term gnosis come to these very linear movie-like conclusions in the back of their head or their subconscious. We think of hypnosis, people staring at pendulums, things going back and forth, staring at candles. And that sure is one way to get there. I'm not going to deny that. And what I want to say right now is my critiques do not lie with any specific magician, chaos magician, witches, whatever. It's more the associations with the word and how words are often not so helpful. So this is what we're going to talk about in today's episode, and each is always allowed to decide for themselves and really reflect on their own experiences. With that being said, you guys know the drill for this channel by now. Question me, question everything on this one on all things, and figure out what works for you. Hit the bell and subscribe notifications for more content in the future. So with that being said, let's do a quick review on the words gnosis or trance. Traditionally in chaos magic philosophy, there are two styles. I'm going to argue there's more, but there's two big groupings here. The inhibitory state, which deals with states of deep, deep relaxation. This could be deep meditation, single pointed focus, doing things in a deprivation tank, all that good jazz hypnotherapy, just to name a few examples. Then there's excitatory gnosis, which deals with the sex magic example, the drumming circles, trance, high octane rituals, and that deals with heightening your energy, your emotions, and building this state through excitement. And in my experience, both of these can work, but it's all relative to you. And I think a lot of that deals with being self-conscious. For example, I do casting circles, and all I'm going to say is that while that can be fun, that's to bring in the energy. Then at the end, I like to just write a petition or script or whatever when I have the energy in there. But with while we may be letting the cat out of the bag, so to speak, a little bit early, the other one that, that gets overlooked here is what is known as 
let's just say vacuity style gnosis, which can be found in the book Condensed Chaos as always by Phil Hine. And here's what he writes. The other altered state is that of indifferent vacuity, a sort of non-particularly bothered state. An example of sigilization by this route is to doodle sigils while listening to a talk, which is boring, but you have to take notes on. What he's basically saying here is that the object of vacuity style gnosis is to just do something from a state where you're completely unbothered or uncaring if the magic is going to work or not, and this doesn't have to be limited to doodling sigils. And personally, while we're going to expand on this, I think, I'm going to argue this is actually the state New Age is going for. This is what I find when I'm just journaling, and one of my biggest tricks for manifesting this year is throwing out the spells and stuff. Yes, that's going to sound contradictory to other things I've said, because I do a lot of things in my life, in my practice, but it's just doodling, for example, writing a list of shoots I want to do and topics I want to cover, and they seem to manifest at a random point in time. That's kind of set it or forget it. Now, I guess you could also argue stuff like the visualization, while I think that is important, could be a inhibitory state of trance for New Agers. You could also argue that the object is to get so heightened in the emotion of having the thing with a gratitude or a scripting where it completely possesses you, takes you over, or creates a state change. And I think all those things can work whether it's New Age, Satanism, Chaos, Magic, whatever, but the point of this episode is figuring out which one works best for you. Generally, the vacuity state works best for me where I'm just, whether it's scripting New Age or activating the sigil or doing the ritual or reading Words of Power by Damon Brand or sc scanning a gallery of magic talisman, I'm just getting down to business and whatever happens after that happens. I really don't care if it happens or not. And the trick is, is when you're done, you got lost, you got absorbed in the act. And time just flew by and you kind of dissolved. And I think this is the one that New Agers should go for, especially if they're going to try the Jen Mazur book or anything or script, is to focus on the state of indifference where all that matters is putting the pen to the paper and getting the next, next sentence on the page. Whether you sigil, work with the spirit, or topics for other days and up to your own, or subject to your own magical aptitude, your experience, and knowing your own circumstance. But I think this is the one people should go for, and I think it really comes down to also people that just like to write with their hands. Chances are, if you're a creator, you're artistic, whether you're painting too, this is the state you really fall into even after the emotion dissipates. Example, I'm not a complete AO spare junkie, but I'd imagine, yes, there's the excitement of painting the thing, but what happens is we get in our head about, oh, I'm not feeling super excited 15 minutes in. No, you're just lost in the art, and that's okay. You kind of black out. Or when you're working on a different project or something at work and that creative flow takes over, I'm going to argue that's the vacuity state of gnosis. Your focus is no longer on the getting of the thing. It's just on doing the work. Now, bringing this back to New Age, it's going to be a shorter shoot. Here's what I'm going to argue when people are doing the 55 by 5. This is the state you're going for. Maybe some experts can generate an emotion, but what I find, and I don't never did the 55 by 5, but even when I'm doing gratitude or I don't need more, um, if I did traditional affirmations, it hit a point where you're just writing this thing and you're kind of just getting lost in it. The inner critic shuts down, it no longer cares if it's practical or not, and it's subtle to notice, but by the end, you should be able to. If you're writing, you know, 55 times, yeah, you're just blacking out, and all that you is you and the idea, and there's no inner critic anymore to do anything or sit and ingest the idea, or even look at it as though... Um, you set an intent, and by hitting that state, you're allowing yourself to process and sit with that emotion and not allowing other inside interference to occur. I have mixed views on the whole, using in a different podcast thing, because you could run the risk of getting conflicting ideas relative to what you're doing in relation to your manifestation. For example, if you were writing a 55 by 5, 
just for example's sake, you probably shouldn't be listening to some content creator telling you about spending and saving and clearing your credit card debt, at least in that point in time. In my experience, you probably shouldn't be listening to too much magical content when doing this stuff. For example, I'm a fan of the Magic.me podcasts. I noticed at a certain point I tripped myself up. I would listen to him because he has a nice soothing voice. And sometimes he'd say things that I pick up on that may relate to my magic and take me out of trance or just would connect and create new associations in the mind. But the bottom line here is this, that if I put on something like sports that I knew couldn't relate to my thing or maybe I'll put on an audio book or something or listen to some guy the Bond fans fight about the nonsense, the controversy that surrounds all that shit. Um, I don't care about any pop culture spirits from a multimedia perspective. Those are the kinds of things I will put on. But what I want to bring home here is that I really think the new age can help people evoke that state if it works for them, especially if you're somebody like me also who doesn't believe in trying to achieve things through meditation and just likes to breathe and be present and achieve mental stillness. And may not have the space to perform large rituals or they get self-conscious. While I do some casting circles just to stay connected to magic. Um, or doesn't like the memorization or shouting chants or big on the visualization. Once again, writing out the rites for a spirit can be an example of vacuity gnosis here to connect to that energy and manifest it, allow it to flow through your body. Yes, you can set an intent, but I think this is what's happening. And really beyond a catchy term, what vacuity gnosis comes down to is achieving creative flow. While I don't know the guy, um, I would imagine that a comic book creator like Tommy Kelly naturally achieved this state when he made something like the 40 servants, just getting lost in the doodles, everything else. Um, the creative process and not on the results themselves. And I was listening to a podcast um, from him today. It sounds like when he was doing that, I would venture to guess, yes, he was in that state because he wasn't concerned about making money or anything. He was just one with his creativity. And that's where you're going with new age. Now, how to get there. You got to throw out the other people's affirmations, the worries about the feeling state and the Neville Goddard stuff. Yes, it's good to be inspired, but just be present with putting the pen to the paper and you're making the vision board. While I'm not a fan of that idea in a traditional sense, but these are all examples. The big takeaway being I do feel that it is not a truth, but arguable that the new age will help you achieve a state of Vacuity triggered gnosis, and that is, at least in my opinion, what allows the Gen Nazer stuff to work for me or has in the past. Even if you need a sigil later on, you will be more likely to connect to the ideas or the inspiration points that matter. That concludes this episode. It is a wrap, and we're going to be moving on to some other things from here now. But um, I was happy to revisit some old turf, maybe touch base with some of the New Age audience that may be left. Well, chances are, if you like this channel, you may be moving on too. But I also want this episode to be a testimony that you can run New Age tech from a new understanding, and it doesn't have to be New Age anymore. But that's a wrap. I hope you guys like it. Um, and enjoy this video and achieve some nice progress in your life. Give this a like, give it a share. You can support me on Patreon for a couple dollars a month should you choose. No, we're not doing exclusive content right now. I want to keep things free. I may have special ideas coming, but I don't have a timestamp on them. Anyway, take care, guys. Best of luck. Eudaimonia. Um, the only other thing I want to say is the Jen Mazer video stuff can be included in a playlist in the drop down box on the right and or the Law of Attraction slash Chaos Magic playlist on this channel. Take care, everybody.